When trying to capture cinematic video from your DJI Mini 2 or Mini 3 drone, there's a common mistake that a lot of hobbyists and YouTube video creators make. In today's video, I'm going to share what that mistake is and give you my approach on how to avoid this in the future. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name's Denim. I share and create content around my DJI Mini 2 drone tips and tricks and how to get the best out of your drone, as well as creative projects that I'm working on. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. So let's talk about the mistake. And it's a common one that a lot of people overlook when they first get their drone. If you get into the habit of making this mistake, you'll never notice it and you'll end up just giving up on creating projects or capturing video simply because we just do not put the time in to plan beforehand what our video is gonna be about and what we are actually trying to create. This is such an important step and there's an old saying that goes failing to plan is planning to fail the same goes for drone videos that you're trying to create and creative projects that you're working on whether you realize it or not if you're a hobbyist or a professional you're using a camera drone to capture aerial cinematography or photographs by using a creative side that you have and being creative with a drone is so much fun and it can be a lot of fun but in this video what i really wanted to give you was an approach that you can take to make sure that while you're having fun, you've also got a, a system or something you can follow that helps you be creative, but also get the most out of the videos that you're capturing and have less footage that you'll be disappointed in and more footage that you'll be happy and proud to share with your family, friends, or even clients that you're working with. How do we get around this? And I was thinking about this a lot because in the early days of creating YouTube videos, and even in my early days of flying a drone, I started off as being a hobbyist. I, I love drones because I get a new perspective on my landscape. I was always so inspired by what it created. But as I started to follow my passion for flying a drone and capturing footage, what I started to realize was that I kept making the same mistakes over and over again. And that mistake was again, not planning, not understanding how to structure my video. What I started to create for myself was a little approach that I use every time that I go out to fly. And the way I like to break my videos up is into these four sections. It starts with number one, opening shots. Number two is revealing shots. Number three is tracking and orbiting shots. And number four is closing shots. So let's get into a little bit more detail of what each of these sections are and what I try to do with them. The first one is opening shots. And the way I like to look at opening shots when I get to a certain area that I'm trying to film at is I want to know where my subject is or my point of interest. Having a point of interest in your video or something that you're trying to highlight in your video is, is very important for creating an engaging piece of content or video to share with someone. For an opening shot, what I like to do is if I know where the subject is, I know my landscape and environment, what I start to do is introduce different things that are in that environment. So whether it's the trees, whether it's the color of the sky, gives this audience and the viewer a sense of where you're at and what you are moving your video towards without giving away the actual subject and getting too intimate with the, the actual scene straight away. So I go with having my opening shots revealing a little bit of the subject and the landscape without giving away too much and trying to get different perspectives to introduce that to the audience let's talk about revealing shots a little bit and revealing shots is where you now start to unpack and unfold all the different elements that your subject or your landscape that you're highlighting the real reason why you're filming you start to introduce more and more of that to your audience and you try to do that from different perspectives, different speeds. What I like to do is not get too close in my revealing shots. What I want to do is create a sense of drama and a sense of mystery in this part of my video. Now, you're not gonna nail this every single time. You're not gonna get this perfect every single time. Having the concept or the idea that you can follow this template is gonna help you structure your video. And that's what this is about. And as you do this more and more, you will get better at it. It's definitely helped me structure my videos better and I've seen an improvement in not only in the engagement of my videos but I've also seen people commenting a lot more or admiring the work that I'm creating and as creators that's really important for us. Create that sense of drama, use foreground to block out some of your actual subject when you're moving towards it. Don't just fly directly at it and you know reveal it in that way. Try to be a little creative with what's in your environment and your surroundings and really try to 
almost block out some of it before you actually reveal all of it. Tracking and orbiting is the third part or section in all of my videos. And I generally like to keep it there because once I've revealed a little bit of the mystery of the subject or the location that I'm filming at, the next part that I want to do is get a little bit more closer, a little bit more intimate, as you would call it, with the subject or landscape. And when I mean intimate or closer, you're trying to get close-ups using tracking. You're trying to show that subject interacting with its in natural environment and in a flow of its normal movement. And what I mean by that is if you've got a car that's on a road, you wanna to try to track that movement because it's something that people can understand and it brings back a sense of nostalgia, a sense of maybe a memory that they had where they were driving on an open road. That's what you're trying to invoke. You're trying to invoke an emotion with tracking. That's the really key part of this section. Make sure you hold your shots for long enough. There is so many times that I've gone out and planned my video and done everything I could have done to get the best shots I could have done and not held my shots for long enough. And don't make this mistake in the future. What you want to do is hold your shots. I say this over and over again because it is so important. You want to hold it for long enough to build that sense of drama and invoke emotions within your audience. The last section of my video is always a closing shot. It's no surprise here, but when you're talking about closing shots, what you're trying to do here is give the viewer a sense that the subject is leaving or you are leaving the subject. It's really simple to do with something like a tracking shot and you know you might fly off into the into the background and you you won't see that subject again. You want to think about how you can invoke that emotion of telling the viewer that the video is coming to an end and it's ending and there's no point where that subject is coming back. It leaves the viewer with the sense that they want more of your video, but knowing they're not going to get it. It's an important part of any video, a good ending. You, you would have watched many movies in the past, and no matter how good the start was, no matter how good the storyline was, if the ending wasn't good, you generally won't ever remember that movie ever again. And the reason we create videos is to leave an impression on people. And to do that, you've got to have a really good ending. And you've got to think about the shots that are going to enable you to do that. So think about what all these sections mean for your videos and try to be creative within them. You don't need to be too overly thought and planned out. You might want to go to a lot of detail in this plan, but I like to keep it as simple as possible because it allows me to remember these things. Now, what I have done in the background is I've been working really hard on creating cinematic drone moves that people can take out with them when they go flying. So I've created 12 cinematic drone moves playbook. I use these drone moves on a regular basis and I take these out on my mobile device and sometimes I do print them off and it acts as a really good prompt for me to remind me of the moves that I want to try to do but also keeps that structure and also a template for me to follow each time I go out to film a video or be creative. This is a valuable resource that I think you'll get a lot of benefit from. So check that out if you're interested. I'll leave the links for you in the description below. That's it for today's video. I hope you got some value out of it. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like to let me know that you enjoy this type of content. Any questions, you can leave them for me in the comment section. And YouTube's recommending two videos for you to watch right now. I'll see you in one of them. Take care. Bye.